Let's rise up as we pray together. Father, we thank you because you brought us together to bless our hearts. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you bless your people today in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us, Lord, to know your promises, to believe your promises, to accept your promises, and to be benefited by your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're looking at Matthew chapter 14. And I'm reading from verses 35 and 36. Matthew chapter 14, verse 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And besought him that he might only touch, they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made, tell me, perfectly whole. As many as touched him were made perfectly whole. And the word of God is still the same today. The promises of God are still the same today. And Jesus Christ has demonstrated that his power is able to heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, and set the captives free. All through his earthly ministry, he showed and proved to everyone that whatever their challenges were, whatever their problems were, he was able to resolve them. Look at the summary of his ministry in Acts chapter 10. Verse 38, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about, what was he doing? Doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. This morning we are looking at Christ's healing ministry for the whole man. Christ's healing ministry for the whole man. Christ's ministry of healing has often been limited or sometimes misunderstood. Many people have limited that healing to maybe the blind seeing or the lame rising up and walking and the deaf and the dumb hearing and speaking. But we want to understand today that his supernatural healing is extensive. And it is for the whole man. That means the ceiling is for the spirit, for the soul, and for the body. He heals the whole man. Heals the soul. Heals the body. He heals the feeble bodies. And he heals the fainting hearts. He quickens the spiritually dead. And he raises those who are physically dead. He opens our eyes of understanding. Not only that, he opens the blind eyes. He makes the deaf to hear spiritually and physically. He restores the weak inner man and he renews and recovers the sick, impotent man. In short, he redeems the soul. He renews the spirit. He recovers the body. And he makes us every weak whole by a supernatural power. Every weed hole, internally, externally, family, anything and everything around us, it sets us free. And I pray that his supernatural power will set everyone free today in Jesus' name. Christ's healing ministry for the whole man. Three things we're looking at. Number one, understanding healing for the soul that's why it starts when christ begins to work when god begins to work he walks within our soul he walks within our spirit he walks within the inner man understanding healing for the soul point number two unfailing healing for the sick those who are sick those who are impotent those who are infirm those who are troubled those who are tortured those who are tormented there is healing for the sick. Number three, undeniable healing for the saints. 
children of God, saints of God, disciples of the Lord, followers of Christ. They have the assurance that they will not be denied when they ask, and we ask in faith, undeniable healing for the saints. Number one, understanding healing for the soul. Actually, the problems we have, they begin from the inside. Any sickness, any infirmity, any problem begins from the inside. And when the inside is healed, also the outside will be healed. And we need to understand this. That is the healing of the Lord for the soul. We're looking at Psalm 6. I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 6. We're looking at verse 2. In Psalm 6, verse 2, it says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. And then he goes on, My soul is so vexed. And but thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul, and save me from for thy mercy's sake. You see here the psalmist is praying, not necessarily for physical healing, but he was weak on the inside. He was fainting on the inside. He was depressed on the inside. And he said, Lord, I need your healing. I need your help. If you can come with your power and turn my life around, all the sorrow, the depression, and the stress within me, everything will be taken away and I will be healed in my soul. It will heal your soul. Look at Psalm 41, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 41 verse 4, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul. Do you ever pray like that? When your soul is tormented, when your soul is fainting, and when your soul is like you're giving up, and you're so depressed, and you're saying, what am I going to do? There's no strength on the inside. There is healing available for the soul. And it says in that verse, for heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. In the healing of the soul, there's a forgiveness of sin. There's a cleansing from sin. There's a strength that comes even from within. It tells us in Psalm 42, verse 11. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? That's when the soul needs healing. That's when the soul needs redemption. That's when the soul needs upliftment. When it is cast down. And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him. You will praise the Lord. For who is the health of my countenance? And my God is the health of my countenance. You know, what happens on the inside appears also on your face or your countenance. You're sorrowful inside, it shows on your face. You're depressed inside, it shows on your face. You're downhearted inside you, it shows on your face. You're looking for something, you've lost something. And because of that, there's sorrow of heart, it shows on your face. And the psalmist said, you are the health of my countenance. It will heal you today. Inside, outside, it will heal you. In your family, it will heal you. Father, mother, children, he'll heal us in Jesus' name. Amen. And look at Psalm 147. Psalm 147. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, He healeth the broken in heart. That's not, uh, you know, cancer. That's not uh, leukemia. That's not, uh, you know, ulcer. That's not blindness. It just the heart. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up. Their wounds in verse 5. Great is our God. Great is my God. Mighty is my God. Great is our God. And of great power is understanding is infinite. That means there, whatever the challenges are in our souls, maybe you have seen, maybe you are backsliding. Because of that now, peace is taken away. Light is taken away. And you are so dejected and so depressed. There's forgiveness today. There's freedom today. There's a peace of God today for everyone in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 57, I'm reading verse 16. It says, I will not contend forever. Are you there? Yeah. Are you hearing it now? Yeah. Neither will I be always wroth. Have you heard that? Yeah. For the spirit shall fail before me, 
and the souls which I have made. Look at uh, verse 19 now. I create the fruit of the leaves. Peace, peace be to him that is afar off and to him that is near. And says the Lord, and uh, I will heal him. That's the promise of the Lord, and he's going to fulfill that in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 22. In verse 22, it says, Return, ye backsliding children. Uh, here, the Lord is not just talking about something physical. It's, so, it's talking about something spiritual. And it says, return. It means repent. It says, come back unto me with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It says, return, ye back like these children, and I will heal your, your what? Your backslidings. He heals backslidings. When the soul is gone away from the Lord, and when the soul is not seeking the Lord, when the soul is not following after the Lord, like it shall follow after the Lord, it says, I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. He will heal all backslidings in Jesus' name. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 15. I'm showing you from the scriptures that there's healing for the soul as well. Healing for the soul. Jeremiah chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 30. Reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, Why Christ thou for, the, for thine affliction? It says, thy sorrow is incurable, not sickness there, sorrow. Thy sorrow is incurable, thy stress incurable, thy depression is incurable, your mental torture is incurable, that is incurable by natural means. It says in that verse 15, thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. But look at verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Yeah. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. That is of the sorrows you have which appeared incurable in verse 15. It says I'll heal, I'll heal thee. I'll recover thee of thy wounds says the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast saying this is Zion whom no man seeketh after. I pray that the goodness of the Lord will seek after you today. And we reach out to you today in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Hosea chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 4. Hosea chapter 14, reading from verse 4. It says, I will heal their backsliding. You understand? When somebody has gone away from the Lord and is backsliding, a lot of uh, problems come, psychological problems, spiritual problems, occultic problems, whatever it is. And the Lord is saying today is the day of your healing in Jesus' name. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Do you have to pay anything? I said you have to pay anything. I will love them freely for my anger is turned away from him. We come to the New Testament now in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Here the Lord Jesus Christ himself is the one saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He says, because he has anointed me to preach, to proclaim, to declare the gospel, the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal what kind of people? The broken hearted. You see that? The people who are broken hearted, many times when people are broken hearted and they are under some conflict and stress and sorrow and suffering emotionally, they don't go to the Lord. They think that only when their bone is broken, they can go to the Lord. When their flesh is wounded, they can go to the Lord. When their eyes or their ears have problems, they can go to the Lord. But no, when you are broken hearted, when you are sorrowful, when there is depression, and when there is you know, suffering on the internal, in the inner man, he says he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. He'll do it. And to set at liberty them 
that uh, bruise. It will set everyone at liberty in Jesus' name. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And it says, and he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, when is your healing? When is your deliverance? And when is your restoration? This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He'll fulfill it for you in Jesus' name. We come to point number two now of failing, healing for the sick. This is the one we're familiar with. That when you're sick in your body, when you're tormented in your brain, when there is any challenge, there is healing on failing for the sick. Let's look at the prophecy concerning Jesus Christ. What he will do when he comes uh, the first time and uh, what he keeps on doing uh, after he has come the first time. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 and I'm reading from verse 4. He says, surely, somebody shall surely. Surely he has uh, borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes were healed. And with his stripes you are healed. Spirit, soul, and body you are healed. In your brain, in your mind, you are healed. In your family, in your life, you are healed in Jesus' name. Now, there are people that will think that uh, theologians in particular, they say that that refers to only spiritual healing. That's the one we dealt with in verse 1. They said, oh yes, when you have sorrow, when you have heartache, when your hearts are broken, the Lord will heal you because by his tribes were healed. That is true, but there is much more. Let us look at the interpretation of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8, we're reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, we're reading from verse 16. It says, when the evening was come, they brought unto him uh, many that were possessed with devils. They had mental problems, they were lunatics, and they had their mental challenges. And they brought unto him, and all you are brought here today, the Lord will touch them in Jesus' name. And then he goes on to say, he cast out the spirits with his word. All those evil spirits at the mention of the name of Jesus, they'll be cast out in Jesus' name. Look at the latter part of the verse, verse 16. And he healed how many people? Who is included in that all? Thank God I'm there. I say thank God I'm there. I say thank God I'm there. Believers are there. He healed all that was sick. Unbelievers are there. He healed all that was sick. Newcomers are there. He healed all that was sick. And the fathers and mothers in the Lord in the face are there. He healed all that was sick. Look at this, verse 37. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. That's saying the interpretation of Isaiah chapter 53 when it says by stripes were healed. It said this is the interpretation. Before he went to the cross and the people were looking forward to the time when by stripes we will be healed. After he's gone to the cross, he died on the cross and he said Father, God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And about your sickness, about your sin, about your infirmity, about your problem. Now we can look back to the cross and still say, by stripes I am healed. We're coming to First Peter, First Peter chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 21. For even here unto what ye called... Verse 21, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we shall follow his steps. Look at verse 24, who is own cell bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Has he borne your sin? Has he taken your sin? Can he forgive you today? 
can he, can he give you the salvation of the Lord? He says, he has borne our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. By whose tribes? By whose tribes? were healed. Ye were healed. It's been done already. It will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. How does he do that? How does he heal us? Now we are coming to his message of healing the sick. And you realize how he healed the sick with simplicity. He healed the sick. We're looking at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 we're reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8. We're reading from verse 5. In verse 5 it says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. That means pleading with him. That means praying unto him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home of the sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. You notice something here? The sick man was not even there physically. It was the person that wanted to collect the healing by proxy that came, that was there. Maybe you have somebody who is sick, who is infirm, who is impotent, and is not physically there. Look at the method of Jesus. He said, at home my servant lies sick. And is grievously tormented. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Hold on, hold on. The man was looking for healing. How many people are seeking for answers to prayers today? He will answer your prayer. The man said, I am not worthy. You know many people that are trying, they say, I'm trying to get worthy. I'm trying to befit myself and qualify myself for the healing of the Lord, for the salvation of the Lord, for the blessing of the Lord. No, we are not qualified. It's out of not being qualified. He still touches us. He'll touch you this morning. And he says, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. He said, you don't have to come home with me. You don't have to lay hands on him. You don't have to even see him at all. Anywhere you are today, the Lord has seen you. And he will touch you where you are in Jesus' name. And then eventually look at what Jesus said in verse 10. When Jesus had it, he marveled. And Jesus said, after he marveled unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. If you have faith today, and thank God you have faith, that's why you came. You are expecting, that's why you came. Your expectation will be turned to reality in Jesus' name. And then we're told in verse 13, it says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou as believed, there's a believer there today. As thou as believed, I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart that whatever I ask him today, the Lord will answer. He will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Go thy way, go thy way. You are going back home with healing. Going back home with your salvation. Going back home with restoration. Going back home with answer to your prayer. Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed. Tell me. The servant was healed in the self same hour. Look at your time. This self same hour, the blessing is coming unto you. The miracle is coming unto you. And that is how Jesus did it at that time. That's how Jesus is still doing it today. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Uh, I will read him from verse 8. Hebrews 13. Uh, I will read him here from verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same uh, when? Yesterday, everything he did in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, that's what he summarized together. And he's saying, yesterday, and it's still the same today, he's going to do this for you today. And it's the same forever. 
Because he has not changed, his power has not changed. Even when he went to heaven, after he went to heaven, his disciples continued, his apostles continued. In the same way we are continuing today, and the blessings of God will flow through to you where you are in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 7. Here in verse 7, look at what he's saying here. He's saying, Acts chapter 14, verse 7. It says, and there they preached the gospel. What are you hearing now? I said, what are you hearing now? The good news that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The gospel is coming to you. The good news is coming to you. Look at verse 8, and there such a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked the same heard Paul speak. The same heard for Paul speak. Anybody hearing today? Anybody has ears to hear? And then you are hearing the good news for you. The good news is for me. I said the good news is for me. And every promise in that good news will be yours in Jesus' name. The same had Paul speak, uh, who steadfastly beholding him uh, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, faith to be healed, faith to be healed. Uh, with, uh, I said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Did he touch him? Did he lay hands on him? Did he anoint him with oil? Did he push him down? Did he uh, try to, you know, personalize everything? Okay, I'm talking to you personally. No. He was in the congregation, like uh, the congregation of the victorious people of God today. And it says with a loud voice, it says, stand upright on thy feet. What happened? And he leaped and he walked. That's how it's going to happen today. I don't have to come to you there. The power of the Lord is available today. It will solve your problems in Jesus' name. And you'll say, as you hear the word of faith, the wonders of faith will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You believe in the name of Jesus, the signs will follow you. You believe the promises of God, the signs will follow you. You believe the power of, of the cross of Calvary, the promises will follow you today in Jesus' name. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Are you there? In my name, they shall cast out devils. And the devils will go out. They shall speak with new tongues. No bad language again. No sorrowful language again. No language of regret again. He never answers my prayer. Your language will change. I'm always tormented. Your language will change. I fast, I pray, I get nothing. No, you will get something today. Your language will change in Jesus' name. They shall speak with new tongues. And it says, they shall take up serpents. Those serpentine spirits, those things crawling about in the body, they'll take them away from your body. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall, they shall, today I will recover from the top of my head to the tip of my toe. I will recover internally i will recover from every sickness i will recover from every infirmity i will recover from the things i fear from the things i fear from the things i fear i will recover you have recovered already in jesus name look at verse 20 verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. 
And the church said, yes. Amen. Point number three now, undeniable healing for his saints. You see the miracle healing of Jesus Christ as he went about doing good, healing all that oppressed of the devil. Many of them on the street, in the open, on the field, in the synagogue, everywhere, they were majorly for those who had not even known him. How about those who have known him? How about the saints? How about the children of God? How about the believers? What provision has God made for you, for me? Undeniable healing for the sick. If he's healing outsiders, he will heal the insiders. If he's healing the newcomers, he will heal those who have been here for a long time in Jesus' name. Our brothers are going to be healed. Our sisters are going to be healed. Our believing families are going to be healed. Undeniable healing for his sins. Look at uh, Exodus chapter 15. These are the children of God. These are the saints of God. And look at the healing covenant he had with them. He tells us in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. He's talking to believers here, saints of God here. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. Egyptian sickness will not be upon you. Egyptian plague will not be upon you. Egyptian accident will not be upon you. Egyptian calamities will not come upon you. And then he says, for I am, he said, I was. He said, I will be. Tell me what it is. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You are healed. Aren't you healed? I said, are you not healed? Undeniable healing for his saints. We're coming to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 20. It says, behold, I send my angel before thee to keep thee you know, in, thy, in the way. And to bring thee unto the land, unto the place which I have prepared. I need to tell you something here. The Lord said, I said, I'm sending an angel. And that angel will go before you, the whole congregation. And it will lead you to the land that I have prepared for you. But can I remind you, they didn't see the angel. The congregation didn't see the angel. And the angel didn't talk to them directly. Moses got the message from God, what he said, either through, uh, through uh, the spirit or through the angel. All they could see was Moses. But God said, there's an angel before you. You see, there are people they don't understand. When they hear the word of God, they don't understand. It's the word of of the Lord and the watch of the Spirit. And if he's sending an angel before us, ministering unto us, is what we'll hear from the angel. I pray you will not miss it. It says in verse 22, but if thou will indeed obey his voice, did he hear him audibly? But he heard the man of God, Moses, and do all that I speak. It says, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies. You don't have to worry about enemies anymore. God will deal with them. And God will put them in their place in Jesus' name. And an adversary to an adversary is, for my angel will go before thee. I said, my angel will go before thee. And bring thee into the place of the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I will cut them off. Look at verse 24. And thou shalt not bow down to their, unto their gods, nor serve them, nor deal after their works, nor but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and they shall break, quite break down their images, and uh, ye shall serve the Lord your God. Anybody serving the Lord or God here? That's why we came. You're serving the Lord. You will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. And he shall bless thy bread. He will bless your breakfast. He will bless your food. And thy water. 
and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He will fulfill his promise upon your life today. That's for the saints of God. Look at this. And there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will not die young. I will not die before my time. You will not die before your time. Charm will not kill you. Evil spirit will not kill you. Jealous people will not kill you. As you are being promoted and then you are going up and up and somebody is saying, why is he so happy like that? Why is he so joyful like that? I'll bring him down. No, they will be the people that will come down. You will not come down in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 1. This is undeniable healing for the saints of God. You are a child of God. You are a believer. Jesus has redeemed your soul already. You can claim these promises that the people of God had in those good old days. And they will be yours in Jesus' name. 2 Kings chapter 20. It says in those days, Ezekiel was sick unto death. And the, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. That's prophecy. What's that? I said that's prophecy. What's that? Who gave that prophecy? Was that a false prophet? Was he a true prophet? Yes, but it depends on your attitude. It depends on when you are ready to go. I am not ready to die yet. I said I'm not ready to die yet. You know, somebody said, I had, a, I had a dream, and in that dream, they gave me cancer. Depends on whether you accept it or not. I will not accept it. I had a dream, and a prophet came to me, and he said, I am so and so, you are going to die, and he mentioned the time. I said, go your way, I'm not ready to die yet. Somebody there, I am not ready to die yet. And look at what followed. He said, set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. But still, then he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed to the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and I've done that which is good in thy sight. You know it, and his God wept so. He said, what am I hearing? Every negative prophecy against your life is cancelled in Jesus' name. He said, Lord, I'm a saint. I'm a child of God. I'm talking to a child of God over there. The promise of God will be yes and amen in your life. Look at this, verse 4. And it came to pass, for Isaiah was gone into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, turn again. Turn again. They'll come back again. That prophet will have to come back again. When he said, thou shalt die, that's not the final word. If you believe the other promises of God, he will come back again and reverse that thing. Yeah. Turn again and tell Ezekiel, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayers. Yeah. The Lord is sending me to tell you today, he has heard your prayer. Yeah. I have seen thy tears, he has seen your tears. Then he says, Behold, I will heal thee. I will heal thee. Who is the Lord talking to there? You are healed in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter what dream you had last night, you are healed in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter what the enemies have told you, you are healed in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter what kind of letter somebody wrote to you, what kind of email somebody wrote to you, and what kind of text somebody sent to you, and he said, No, you will not escape that one. Hey, we have escaped already. I have seen thy tears, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. Are you ready for this? Verse 6, verse 6, verse 6. And I will add unto thy days. 
15 years. You, you understand that? And that means that there's nothing fixed. If it may be you are now about a particular age and something is, your mind is telling you, your thoughts are telling you, your body condition, the bodily condition is telling you, and the doctors are telling you, they said uh, only six months to go. That's natural. That's medical. I'm going to tell you something spiritual. 15 years more. I will add to thy days 15 years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. I thought you'll say, Amen. Amen. The saints of God have the privilege of total healing, complete healing for your spirit, for your soul, and for your body. And you're going to be healthy. You're going to be strong in Jesus' name. I come into Psalm 103, and I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless it. His holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his uh, benefits. Who forgiveth, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. He'll have mercy on you. If there's any iniquity there, he'll forgive you today in Jesus' name. You're coming for the first time, and uh, you feel the weight and the load of your sin. He'll forgive you today in Jesus' name. Or maybe you were careless and you backslid. The Lord will have mercy on you and restore you today in Jesus' name. And then believers, your sins are forgiven. You are rejoicing in the Lord. You bless the Lord that all your sins are forgiven. And who healeth how many diseases? Who healeth how many diseases? Which one can you manage? Which one can you tolerate? Which one can you endure? It will heal you. Who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Destruction will not come upon you. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth, prosperity has come. You have enough to eat and to spare, enough to spend and to spare. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles all the cells of your body it will renew yeah. psalm 105 verse 37 37 he brought them forth also with silver and gold and there was not one feeble person among their tribes you will not be feeble again Psalm 107 verse 20, 107 verse 20, he sent his word. What are you hearing now? He sent his word. I said, what are you hearing now? And healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He will deliver you totally, completely, entirely, without any kind of infirmity remaining in your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 33 undeniable healing and health for his saints. Isaiah chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33, reading from verse 24. And the inhabitants of the land shall not say, I will not say, and the members of his church shall not say, and the saints in the habitation of the Lord shall not say, and inhabitants of the and inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick. Why? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquities because they are forgiven. That's why it says they will not say, I am sick. After you leave here, after this service, you'll not be going around saying, I am sick, I am sick. I'm looking for something, I am sick. You're not looking for any other thing. You're well in Jesus' name. Look at uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Uh, I'm reading here from verse 17. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy. And our members are going to return home again with joy. 
And the seventh year returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, he said unto them, I, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, you will see this one. Behold, you will behold this one. This one will happen to you. I said this one will happen to you. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power over all the power over all the power of the enemy and nothing charm nothing disease nothing infirmity nothing a plague nothing an accident nothing an evil spirit nothing Anything that happened to our forefathers and great-grandfathers, this is how they died and that's how they died, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's my promise. I said that's my promise. I'm going to enjoy this one. I'm going to experience this one. I'm a child of God. I said I'm a child of God. This is mine. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What is she there? What is she there? Stand up and claim it. This is yours today. I said, This is yours today. I said, This is yours today. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Remember the promise of the Lord there is healing for the soul. There is healing for the sick. And there is healing for the saint. If there is sin, is there backsliding? It says, I'll heal your heart. I'll heal your soul. I'll heal your backsliding. Tell the Lord, it's a merciful God. It's a loving God. It will hear your prayer. It says, there's the hour of answer. There's the hour of salvation. There's the time of your miracle. Oh Lord, I'm here. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my backsliding. I'm sorry for anything that I did. I'm sorry that I brought myself into any depression of soul or heart or spirit. Forgive me. And the Lord immediately will forgive you. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, He will forgive. He will forgive. Even if you don't remember everything you have done, bundle everything together. Oh Lord, forgive me. Oh Lord, forgive me. Oh Lord, forgive me. And He will forgive. He sees you there. He knows you there. He loves you there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Eternal life is coming to you. Forgiveness is coming to you. Freedom is coming to you. He'll forgive you right there. He'll forgive you right there. Thank him. Thank him. Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And he has forgiven. And he has forgiven. And he has forgiven. He forgives. Tell him he forgives. Tell him he forgives. And promise him I'll not go back to any sin anymore. Grant me your grace. Grant me your forgiveness. I depend on your love. I trust in your love. Hand over your soul to him right now. Hand over your destiny to him right now. Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I don't want to carry any guilt of sin away from here. Any condemnation of sin away from here. He heals the sinful soul. The sorrowful soul. You'll forgive. If you will repent and believe, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the good news. Confess unto the Lord. Forsake your sin. Forsake that backsliding. Say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Forgive me. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll purge you. I'll take the weight of sin, the load of sin, the guilt of sin, the condemnation of sin. 
and take that away from you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him and believe. Believe the promise. He saves you now. He forgives you now. He redeems your soul now. Don't doubt him. And don't go back seeking for salvation again. We're born again. Once we repent, once we believe, we're forgiven. Once we for confess and forsake all those sins. He redeems us. He saves us. He forgives us. The moment we repent and believe on his name. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, As bowed and eyes closed. You are there, you want the peace of God. You want the forgiveness of God. You want assurance of salvation. That Christ died for you. And that he prayed for you and he's praying for you now. And you want to have that salvation of the Lord. Wherever you are, you want to be sure you have the ticket that takes you to heaven. Eternal life. Salvation. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. You say, yes, Lord, I come today. And I want you to forgive my sin. And if you're a backslider, here is your opportunity. Here is your chance. You can call upon the name of the Lord. You raise up your hand. Say, Lord, here am I. Forgive me. It will forgive you. You are inside, you are outside, wherever you are. Where are you? Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. He'll forgive you. He'll change your life. He'll redeem your soul. He'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. Wherever you are, raise up your hand, raise up your hand. Anywhere you are, as we're raising up your hand, just silently, quietly, dear, confess to the Lord. Say, Lord, I know what I've done. I'm not right in your sight. I'm not right just in your sight. I want you to forgive me, tell the Lord. I want you to save my soul, tell the Lord. I want you to redeem me, tell the Lord. I want you to give me eternal life, tell the Lord. As you tell the Lord, backslider, he'll restore you. And if you promise him, I'll not go back to that wilderness of sin anymore. As you tell the Lord, sinner, you're coming for the first time or you've been here before, but you don't have assurance of salvation. You're telling the Lord now, Lord, save me. He will save you right now. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and tell the Lord you'll not go back to those evil things anymore, those immoral things anymore, those disobedient practices anymore, and those things of occultism, idolatry anymore. Tell the Lord you're not going to go back to those things, just you know, coming in, going out, coming in, going out, coming in, going out. I come to the Lord once and for all and tell Him I need your grace. Believe right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. And his promise of salvation will be fulfilled immediately in your life. You'll heal your soul. You'll heal your backsliding. He'll set you free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep up those signs. Keep on raising up those signs. Father, in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know you are prayer answering God. And as many as call upon you, you said, you will forgive and you will save. I pray, Lord, grant them your freedom, your forgiveness, your salvation, restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Grant them, Lord, the voice of the Spirit speaking within them, giving them assurance that their sins are forgiven. The souls are restored. And the salvation of the Lord has come to them even now in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. 
Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, the church say a good amen. A counselor, sir, nearby you there, they'll give you the decision sleep. Get it from them and uh, you feel those uh, sleeves that will help us to follow up on you and to reach out to you with the love of God so that you can be strengthened in your faith. Counselors, uh, let's do that very quickly. Give them those uh, decision slips and let them feel correctly, right, legibly. They have their telephone numbers, email address, check up, the names and the location, the street where they live, check up. So it can be, it will be easy for us to follow up on them. Counselors who are waiting for you. After you finish feeling, you get back to the counselors. And counselors, don't put it in your pocket or Bible. Sometimes it's just automatically done. But we'll give it to those who are coordinating the counseling. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of God who are expecting victory, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Those who are waiting for healing for the soul, healing for the body, healing for the saints, healing for the family, healing for your relatives who are not here, they're far away, and the word of power is going to them there. I said, in Jesus' name we pray. Those who are receiving power this morning, where are they? Behold, I give unto you power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing. I said nothing. I said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That negative prophecy will not kill you. Whatever negative pronouncement you have ever heard in your life will not kill you. You will not come down, you will be going up. You are going to make progress. All the prayers you have prayed, the Lord is going to answer. And the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. You are going back home with healing. Amen. Going back home with deliverance. Amen. Going back home with joy. Amen. Going back to the house fellowship with testimony. Amen. Going back to Thursday Miracle Revival I with testimony. Amen. Who will be the next? Who will be the next? I will be the next. I will be the next. I will testify of the healing of the Lord. Raise up those hands. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, according to your word, according to your promise, that will pray in your name and you will answer. I pray for your people. Answer their prayers in Jesus' name. Every form of sickness, every form of infirmity, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the miracles your people are expecting. The healings your people are expecting. The deliverance your people are expecting. Grant unto them now in Jesus' name. Fulfill your promise in their lives. Cancel every sickness. Cancel every disease. Cancel every infirmity. Cancel every curse from them. Break every yoke from their lives. Make this day a special day. A unique day. A peculiar day. Make this the hour of their miracle. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. All one miracle. All two miracle. All three miracle. All four miracle. All five miracle. All six miracle. All seven miracle. All eight miracle. All nine miracle. Outside miracle. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for what you have done. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.